Okay. Is it recording? It's recording. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. So I, I'm Benita and uh, thanks for joining us tonight uh, on a design thinking and SDG workshop. So uh, it will be a very information uh, packed uh, 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 talk. Uh, for those who have joined my talk before, you you, know, you would know uh, it's very educational and informative. And, and please do not worry about copying any, any things down. Uh, the slide and recording will be shared to you. Uh, I do hope you keep it for, uh, for, for educational purposes. If, if you have come commercial purposes uh, or doing it with a corporate, please uh, please kindly uh, uh, refrain from that or let me know uh, so I can uh, uh, do, do the corporate talk. But if you just want to, for self-information, you're more than welcome. So uh, today is really uh, uh, an, an introduction to the design thinking. Uh, there are a lot of resources and materials out there, but I think um, after today, uh, you will have some idea what design thinking is and what design thinking is not, and uh, how might it apply to the SDG. So uh, one of the uh, polling question is asking yourself whether you are a creative person. So research has said 50% uh, of the people have generally consider themselves as a creative uh, person. And, and, and when we think about creativity, we, we a lot of us link creativity to artistic ta uh, talent. Uh, and for example, a student without uh, artistic uh, 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 ability would be considered as non-creativity. But creativity is really a process and something that uh, we, we definitely need in design thinking. So the second question we ask, uh, what is how might we question? So how might we question is actually a, a way of framing uh, of uh, uh, saying what, what actually need to be done uh, and, and turn a problem in, into opportunities for design, a, a way of framing. So I'll give you an example. So let's say teenage, teenage girls needs to eat uh, nutritious fruit in order to thrive and grow in a healthy way. So we might think about what are the healthy eating options there, or maybe how can we make food more affordable? So before I go further, uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Benita. Uh, I'm the founder of Encompass. We are a social enterprise. I also do different things. I am also passionate about gender equality and LGBT. So that's why I'm a board member of uh, Ace Concern. Uh, I'm also a very passionate uh, scuba diver and a uh, before COVID, uh, before the fourth wave, we were doing a little bit of marine tour into Hoi Ha and all that, but unfortunately now it's closed. But uh, hopefully uh, after Chinese New Year, uh, the things are a little bit better. So uh, Encompass is a social enterprise. Uh, so we uh, work with different NGOs. Uh, so for example, I know Claudia here from Engineer Without Borders. So we offer like uh, services and uh, pro partnerships with NGOs. And uh, we also do a lot of corporate programs. And our mission is really to uh, help uh, to promote uh, the achievement of the UN SDGs. So for those of you who are not familiar with the SDGs, here a quick overview. So um, they come from the Millennium Development Goals and are set in 2015. Uh, they are a set of uh, uh, 17 goals and there are a few of them is my favorite. I like gender, I like 10 reduce inequality, I like uh, climate actions. Uh, those are really uh, SDGs that uh, really I try to work on and they are a framework. So uh, a way of understanding SDGs uh, are that uh, uh, this is my uh, uh, one of my favorite diagram is called the SDG kick. So you have the bottom goals here, which are the uh, uh, planet goals, the SDG planet goals. And for that, with that, you will support the people. So that include gender, uh, equality, health, and all that. And then you have prosperity, which is sustainable city, uh, innovation, and peace and partnership. So um, I will uh, go through more detail of how design thinking can apply to this SDG at the end of the talk. So. This just came out a, a, a few months earlier. If you look at the SDG progress in, in Asia, you will see that we are lacking behind actually uh, across them uh, with all, all the goals. And the, the goal that uh, really uh, is worse in, in uh, uh, APEC is responsible consumption and production. Uh, and for those who have been to my other talks, you would know that I uh, I do a lot of uh, talks in this area in terms of like sustainable coffee or waste or recycling, because I think it's one of the goal, SDG goal that everybody can make a contribution. Um, and that, uh, so if you're interested, you can uh, go to our YouTube, sell other talk, or maybe I'll do a talk on that uh, later as well. So now uh, let's start about uh, design. So we know everything is designed from your smartphone to, uh, to your computer to a lot of things, but not everything is designed well. 
and if you look at design uh, as a history, uh, here's a very brief overview. Uh, in in, in a hundred years ago, we are, we are designing things uh, for consumption during the industrial industrial uh, revolution. We are really just making things uh, uh, to consume. And then uh, in, in the 1930s, uh, there's more marketing. Uh, uh, we design something so it can sell well. So there's a lot of advertising. Uh, in the last uh, 1960s to 2000s, uh, there's a lot, uh, a, a lot more uh, talk on design as innovation. How can we use user-centric design? How can we, we uh, incorporate economics? And then finally, uh, in the last uh, 10, 20 years, we look at design as a business strategy. How can we have the, have the surface design or user design experience? So uh, when we talk about design thinking, I want to start with two quotes. Uh, this is Tim Brown. Uh, he's the CEO of, of IDEO. And uh, if you are really interested uh, to learn more about uh, uh, design thinking, please go to their website or take one of their course. Uh, they are really one of the founding uh, uh, people who, uh, who champion this field. And what Tim Brown said, design thinking is a human-centered approach. So basically, uh, we want to make a system that are usable and usable. Um, for and, and focus on the user, uh, the needs, and uh, um, uh, uh, and uh, by applying human factors. So, human-centered approach is one of the keywords for design thinking. So, here's a second quote: uh, "By thinking by design, uh, when we th uh, think about design, a lot of us uh, think about." charts and data about how do we generate data from it uh, using inductive figure. Uh, design thinking, uh, by contrast, is a, a more uh, a case of adaptive uh, thinking. And for those of you who are not familiar this, uh, with this term, it is uh, it integrates analytical thinking, uh, it in integrates inductive and deductive thinking, uh, to, and in intuitive thinking. And uh, we'll look at more what that means uh, in a short moment. So a brief whirlwind of a uh, uh, history of design thinking. So it started in the 60s uh, when uh, uh, people were talking about how to read scienti uh, scientific uh, 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 discuss the design process. Uh, there's a term wicked problems, which we'll go into that shortly, meaning really difficult problems uh, that uh, maybe design thinking can be used. Uh, and then, uh, for example, Robert McKim also focused on the official uh, thinking research, how, how can we visualize problem? And then there has been more study on the human uh, design. And in the 80s, uh, 90s, uh, there's the introduction of the IDEO. As I said, uh, they are one of the leading uh, leading school uh, in terms of design thinking. Uh, there's also official studies on uh, design thinking on, on what wicked problem is. Uh, and uh, in, in the 2000s, uh, there's the Stanford D School, which is another uh, uh, pioneer in, in, the, uh, uh, in the area. Uh, uh, Hessel Petter from that uh, had, had that uh, movement. So this is a brief overview of the, of the uh, history of design thinking. So when we look at Hussian, uh, um, uh design thinking, uh, it looks at the overlap of desirability, viability, and uh, visibility. And, and what it means uh, desirable is, do we, are we designing something that clients really need it? And do they really run it? And viable, uh, is it sustainable uh, from the business perspective? And third, is it feasible? Uh, can it be conceived? Can it be built? So, uh, Design thing is iterative process, meaning it's not linear. It goes back and forth, and then we'll, uh, we we are looking at the stages of design thinking slowly. Uh, and and the and and the and the and the concept is we challenge assumption of what we think is right. We we define a problem, and we look at strategies and solutions uh, that might not be apparent without initial understanding. So it's a solution uh, based approach of thinking about problem using hands on method, and we will discuss what those hands on methods thing mean. So here's a, a, a few characters of, uh, of design thinking. Uh, I won't go into all of them, but basically uh, we want to defer judgment. We want to uh, uh, defer what assumptions we have and really look at what the uh, uh, user, uh, what the human really think. Uh, uh, we also want to fail early and often, meaning we keep testing. We find different solutions that might work. Uh, we're not afraid of failing and it's part of the process. Uh, we also, I uh, think, go for quantity. So uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the divergent and convergent thinking in a moment um, and go for wild ideas, make it as crazy as possible. So 
Uh, I said earlier, design thinking is good for wicked problems. And, and for those of you who are not uh, familiar with this term, uh, wicked problems, it, it means uh, problems that are ill-defined, uh, that are tricky. It, it's not meaning it's uh, 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 malicious. Uh, a well-defined uh, problem, uh, in contrast, is something that's really, uh, re really, uh, uh, really uh, clear defined. And the solution is available through applying rules on technical knowledge. Uh, wicked problems, uh, in contrast, they are uh, ill-formulated. Uh, there's a lot of difficult information. Uh, there's a lot of stakeholders and decision makers uh, making conflicting values. And uh, uh, the ramification of the whole system are, are very confusing. So design thinking uh, design uh, 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 particularly good for wicked problems. I'm not saying design thinking is good for everything, but it's good for some problems. Um, and if you're interested in my other talks, uh, I will also be talking about system thinkings in my other talk in uh, March, if you're interested to look, look at another way of thinking. So uh, design thinking is a problem uh, 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 framing process, meaning that we don't accept the problem as it is. Uh, the problem is actually might not be the actual problem. Uh, so we need to really explore the given problem uh, and its uh, context. And we might need to reinterpret and restructure the given problem. Uh, given what the user say it. So um, design thinking is solution focus, uh, meaning uh, we are action oriented. Uh, we want to, uh, so it means that uh, we might not know every details uh, of how we solve the problem, but uh, we want to have a clear goal. Uh, so uh, the clear goal is to solve the problem. How we get there is maybe a little bit unknown and uncertainty. And what design thinking is not, uh, it's not just a graphic design, not just an official uh, graphic technique. Uh, it's not a one size fit all solution. As I, as, I, as I said, it works on some problem, it doesn't work on another. Uh, and it's not just for designer. Uh, a lot of business people, for example, have now used design thinking in their business strategy. So there are three eyes in the uh, design thinking. Uh, there's inspiration. Uh, so that is to uh, build empathy for individual, uh, to uh, communicate what they are designing for. And there's the ideation phase uh, to inform the design of the new solution and um, improve understanding of the problem. And the third is implementation, which is uh, to create space to test ideas and prototypes of the solution before implementing them. So uh, you see this diverse, converse, diverse, uh, converge and there will be another diagram similar so basically uh, when we are uh, uh, looking for inspiration we're trying to go for as as wild as idea as possible that's why you diverge and when you have ideation you try to uh, uh, think of a solution uh, you try to think of uh, different uh, ways so you narrow it you converge and then finally when you implement it you might want to uh, diverge and try a different solution and finally come up with a final solution so Design thinking, this is one of the favorite, uh, 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 one of the most uh, used diagram on design thinking, if you Google it. Uh, it's actually uh, first developed in 1969 uh, in, in a paper called Science of the Artificial by a Nobel Pri uh, Prize winner, Herbert uh, Simon. Uh, in his original paper, uh, there's seven stage of uh, design thinking uh, stage. Uh, and, and now today, uh, there are any uh, stages from three to seven, uh, this five stage, model which I will be used uh, to uh, explain design thinking today is uh, popular by the D school and IDEO. So you see there's uh, five steps. So first we empathize uh, to define the problem and then we define what exactly is the problem and then we ideate, think of what the possible solutions are and then we think of a prototype, uh, what that solution could look like, and then we test what that looks like. And as you can see, there's different arrows going back. So for example, when we test the ideas, we might want to go back to the ideal stage to see if it works. Uh, we also learn from prototypes if there are new uh, ideas. Uh, the test may also refine, uh, we may we feel insight that uh, the original problem statement didn't, didn't, didn't work. So it's an iterative process. So as I said, uh, uh, design thinking is really uh, both divergent and convergent thinking. So when you amplify the problem, you think it as broad as possible. And when you reframe it, you converge. And when you ideate, you diverge. And when you prototype and test, uh, you converge again. So it is not as simple as it is. Um, most of the time, it's very messy. So uh, we, there, it's not as pretty as a diagram, but it's, it's, it's a good way for us to understand. 
So the first stage, uh, now I will explain each of the stage. The first stage is to empathize. So um, this stage is for us to understand and share what other feels, uh, put ourselves into other shoes and connect with uh, users how they feel about a problem. So to do that, we, we, we want to encourage stories, uh, what, what users think about the problem, what are some of the hidden needs. Uh, we want to discover the emotions. Uh, so I will give you some suggestions on how you can do that uh, specifically. So for example, uh, you can first observe in, uh, observe how the user interact with, with the product, in, with the environment, uh, capture any quotes, behavior, or other thing, uh, how, describe how they feel. Uh, or uh, you can also have a one-on-one -on -one interview uh, with, with the user, how they feel about a product. So for example, maybe Petra here works with Scandal and she will give feedback on, on uh, sustainable laundry. Uh, so that's one of the common way uh, doing focus group. Uh, third is immerse, uh, find ways uh, to get what the user really feel. So there's one uh, really good technique of how can we empathize with the user. Um, this is called empathy map. Uh, so uh, for example, we can capture what the uh, uh, users say, uh, what they say about the interview. Uh, we can also uh, uh, observe, uh, observe how they think, what they think, uh, what they express about the product. So what they say and what they think may be different. And then we talk about what they do, what they actually, how they interact with the topic, how they uh, 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 behave. And fourth is how they feel about uh, the product. So this is one way uh, we can um, uh, describe how the user feel about a particular problem or particular problem, a particular problem or particular uh, product. So the second stage uh, is defined. So in this is actually the most uh, challenging part uh, in the five stage uh, design thinking, uh, because uh, sometimes it's not easy to define a meaningful um, and uh, actionable problem statement. Uh, your problem statement uh, need to be uh, human centered. It need to be broad enough uh, for for creative freedom uh, without going into too technical. Uh, but it also need to be narrow enough to make it uh, meaningful. So you really need a very good problem statement so you know actually what your problem is so you can uh, uh, solve it. So one way you can do it is using a point of view map. So uh, for example, you can say, I need to uh, buy, you for, uh, buy, a, buy a smartphone because I need to communicate with my friends, for example. Uh, so uh, to make a very good point of view map, uh, you need to uh, has, have a, as narrow uh, focus as possible. So your problem is uh, uh, very clearly defined um, and frame problem as a problem statement uh, and also uh, uh, find criteria that you can use to evaluate uh, complete uh, competing ideas. So here's an example. So here's an adult person who lives in the city, uh, maybe San Francisco, let's say, uh, and he he lives in the suburb, and he need to use the car uh, for some time during the week because he need to do grocery, let's say. But because he doesn't need the car all the time, for uh, for example, he might not need to buy a car. He can use a share ride. So this is a, a point of view map that give you uh, insight uh, uh, from, with the problem. So the first stage is. Uh, Ideate. Uh, so it's a creative process uh, uh, to look at uh, 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 for when designers can generate idea in, in section. Uh, the participant can gather with an open mind uh, to produce as many ideas as they can um, to address a problem statement in a facilitated, judgment free environment. So this stage of ideation will help you to ask the uh, right question, help you to innovate, uh, discover. Uh, unexpected areas of innovation. Uh, it will also create a, a, a volume in your innovative options. So that's why it's a diverging uh, prop, uh, uh, prop, uh, uh, thinking. So uh, again, uh, this diagram may look familiar now. Uh, this is the creative uh, uh, problem solving process. So during the uh, diversion uh, thinking, you are trying to be having as many creative output as possible uh, when then and then after all the ideas come, you might need one to select which one that might work. So that's convergent thinking. Uh, you, uh, it's a narrow down approach. So it's logical, um, deductive and analytical. Uh, you would need to look at the facts and information to need, narrow down a unique solution. 
So here are some uh, typical tools uh, for ideation. I, I, I wouldn't go to all of them uh, in the interest of time, uh, but I, I, I'm picking a couple interesting one uh, for you uh, to, to maybe uh, think about it or use it in, 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 your, in your problem solving uh, process. So this first one I want to uh, mention is the now how wow matrix. So for example, you have a, a blue idea here now. So a normal idea that are easy to implement. Uh, they are typically uh, low hanging fruit uh, uh, and solutions that are easy to fill existing gaps in the process. Uh, they usually bring in incremental benefits. And then you have the how idea. So basically this is a, a, a more uh, original ideas that are impossible to implement. Uh, they are very breakthrough ideas in terms of uh, impact, but absolutely impossible to implement right now, given the current technology. And then you have the wow ideas, uh, which is um, uh, have potential for open shifting change and possible to implement within current reality. So if you want to do this with, with, with your team to think of ideas to a solution, you might ask them to, to put a sticky note to different areas and maybe between the how and why, wow, and now you think of new ways to solve the problem. So this is a, a way for you to think out of the box. Another example is reverse uh, brainstorming. So I think we all know what brainstorming means. Reverse brainstorming uh, means uh, we actually think of uh, uh, solutions uh, uh, that might fail. Uh, so instead of thinking, how can we increase sale? How can we find more customer? We find solutions to decrease sale. So actually this technique uh, will help us to uh, brainstorm different scenario of a problem. So that's one of the technique as well. Here's another technique uh, called scamper. Uh, uh, so uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I will explain it a little bit. So S stands for substitute. So for example, if you have a product uh, that makes of plastic, if you replace it with metal, for example, you may be able to uh, 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 market it to, to, to a higher end customer. Uh, also combine, uh, maybe you can uh, bundle uh, products on the shelf or combine different function. Uh, adapt, uh, for example, you can adjust it into a different prop, uh, purpose. Modify, change the color, change the form, uh, change it larger, stronger. Put it another use. So maybe you can uh, repackage the existing item uh, and sell it to a new audience. You can eliminate. Uh, so for example, if there are certain parts uh, in your product that are very expensive to make, maybe you eliminate that part so uh, it's more uh, less expensive to produce. You can also reverse, uh, reverse the way of you uh, making the product or different the pattern. So here's an example. If you look at a, uh, a, a computer and printer, and I, I, I know a lot of you have had that, those four in one machine in your home, I have one that have scanner, fax and everything. Uh, for example, uh, uh, maybe you can substitute with a high tech material. So um, maybe it's higher speed, can be used for better uh, product. As I said, com combination is very common. You combine different functions, so make it more appealing. Uh, you can adapt it, um, put better quality ink, so uh, it can make, for example, uh, uh, be a color, color, color printer, uh, modify it so it looks really uh, sexy, uh, put it another use. Uh, uh, so again, a printer can be used as photocopier, fast machine, uh, eliminate a function that you might not want, uh, reverse, uh, uh, make different things out of it. So this is one way you can think about uh, uh, your pro uh, 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 an ideation technique. So another te ideation technique is called starbursting. So instead of asking, uh, 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 finding the answer, we ask questions. We generate different questions. We ask what, who, how, when, uh, when, uh, for example, uh, if you are designing a new app, uh, where will we produce the app? What are the features? So ask as many why as possible. What? So you think about the different features of the app using this um, starbursting technique. Another uh, 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 common technique is called a driver analysis. So driver analysis, uh, this looks like a very complicated diagram, but don't worry about it. Uh, the, the, the point here is uh, you want to get to the bottom of the issue to find a, a possible uh, drivers behind it. So uh, for example, uh, uh, you want to uh, uh, 
uh, think about what is keeping the clients away from the company, what is the competition doing differently that is keeping uh, uh, them ahead of us in the market. So uh, once you un uncover the root cause of the issue, uh, you'll be easier to get an idea of how to uh, 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 fix this issue. And the point here is, Instead of really focusing on the solution, focusing on the issue at the first time, uh, work out why we have the issue at the first time. Uh, so for example, you might want to find out why customers are purchasing computer um, products over your own. So uh, yeah, uh, that's one technique. So the first stage is prototype. Uh, prototype is to uh, think about solutions uh, uh, in a different way. Uh, uh, you find out tangible, uh, you come up with tangible products. Uh, so uh, you can test your idea uh, uh, um, other than abstract idea. Uh, prototypes is uh, designed to fail quickly and cheaply. So if your prototype doesn't work, that's totally normal. And, 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 that's, and the reason is, um, if uh, it allows you less time and money for an idea to test an idea rather than uh, uh, come up with a full flash. So there are different uh, forms of prototype. So uh, prototype can be anything that with a physical form, it can be a paper, it can be an object, it can be a, a role playing activity. Uh, in the early stage, uh, you want to keep your prototypes as, as expand inexpensive as possible. So you can quickly explore uh, 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 the possibility. So in a moment, uh, we will talk about uh, low fidelity and uh, high fidelity uh, prototype. So uh, the third point is prototypes are most successful when people can experience and interact with them. So the point of prototype is uh, for you to get feedback from the user. So not just to make something, but actually make something that the user can, can give you feedback. Uh, so uh, the interaction with the prototype uh, can go back to the empathy stage, so you can really help uh, help you to define the problem uh, better. So uh, this is uh, the one to ten to hundred rule. So uh, if you haven't heard of it, this is called uh, 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 how 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 prevention is less costly than correction. Correction is uh, less costly than failure. So instead of making uh, 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 it makes more sense for you to uh, spend the money in preventing what could what could happen than to spend time on correction. So that's the point of a uh, uh, prototype. And uh, just a side point, you would notice a lot of my uh, slides are uh, come from interaction design. So uh, uh, they have a lot of good articles on uh, design thinking as well. So you, if you're interested when you get the slide, you can go to their website and find out more about this concept. So uh, I mentioned there's low fidelity and high fidelity design. So for those of you who are not familiar with the term fidelity, it, uh, it means the degree uh, of exactness of which something is copied or reproduced. So uh, a, a low fidelity uh, prototype, so for example, on the left one is a, is a very crude representation of what, an, what, an, what a, a messenger app would look like. Uh, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a rough representation of a concept. Uh, it's designed uh, so you can get quick feedback. So for example, uh, the user on this left one can say, oh, I don't like this interface. I don't like the phone. I don't like, um, I don't like the response that I'm getting. Uh, so uh, uh, this contrast to the one on the right, so high fidelity uh, 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 prototype, you can see it's much more realistic. So it gives you a more original uh, content, uh, color branding, it allows you to visualize better. So that uh, you need both low fidelity and high fidelity prototype and they're used for different, uh, different stage of the design. So at the early stage of your, uh, of your uh, uh, design thinking, uh, uh, of, of, of your prototype stage, you want low fidelity uh, prototyping. Uh, those are easy to build, cheap and fast, uh, doesn't require special skills. Uh, but of course, uh, the, uh, the cons is uh, 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 they are less uh, functional, less interactive, but they're useful. Uh, so for example, even for you to sketch a paper, uh, uh, your prototype on a paper, it might already help the user to visualize what you mean. In contrast, uh, there's high fidelity prototype. So uh, it gives you an illusion of a functional product. Uh, so for example, uh, the front end may be fully uh, functional and automated, uh, but the back end is actually manual and hidden. Uh, it's more realistic. Uh, uh, it gives you uh, uh, more, uh, 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 more uh, meaningful feedback, uh, but also it takes time to build. 
So there's another way of uh, uh, prototyping. Uh, this is called the journey mapping. It looks very complicated. So basically what this is, is to uh, understand uh, 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 a customer experience over time. So for example, this story here, and, and don't worry about reading all the text. Uh, the idea is to give you an idea what a journey map looks like. Uh, this guy, I need to call a doctor appointment to make an appointment for his mother. And then he check his phone to see if there are any missed call. He get the phone call from the mother uh, while in meeting to ask uh, when he, will he uh, uh, visit again. So he stopped by the pharmacy uh, on his way to make, uh, meet in his mother. And then he visit his mother and talk about a uh, 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 frozen dinner as he prepared over the weekend and then call his mother to say goodnight before going to bed. So as you go through the journey of, of, the, of, of, of this uh, person going through his day, you will go through this different thinking stage. What is he actually thinking at each stage and how are you feeling at each stage? So this is very much uh, similar uh, to the empathy map that we discussed earlier. Uh, so uh, to make journey mapping uh, work is for you to uh, 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 learn about what your uh, target user feel uh, at the different stage of, of interacting with a problem or interacting over time. So for example, there's a time scale, there's a uh, defined journey period. So uh, from your awareness, so for example, from you aware that, oh, my phone is broke, so I need to buy a new phone. So uh, from awareness to conversion, and a different scenario, what would happen uh, 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 when you need to do uh, achieve a goal? And then there's uh, a touch point and uh, how customer do while interacting and how they do it. So for example, here, he get a phone call, so he interact with the phone. And then uh, there's channels, uh, how they perform the actions. For example, did they uh, perform the action on a phone? Did they perform it on a Facebook, uh, on a social media? Uh, what are the thoughts and feelings? So um, the point of this journey mapping is to uh, uh, discover the possible problems and improve uh, the design. So it's more likely to exceed a customer's expectation at all points. Okay, another example, this is surface blueprint. Uh, Okay, I'm sure we all went to McDonald or Five Guys or Shake Shack or whatever. So uh, this is a, a blueprint of how uh, you order a, 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 a burger. And the point here is to prototype uh, how you use the surface. So it allow you visualize how the user experience and interact with the surface. Uh, it helps you identify the gaps so you can optimize both the experience of the user and uh, and your ventures uh, performance. So for example, it breaks down the different aspects of service at each step. So from you order a hamburger to the uh, touch point, the, the menu itself, to how the staff serve you and how, uh, what actually the staff do in the back and what are the support processing behind, you break down different aspects. So it out allow you structure and organize um, the development of new service. And it also allow you to improve already existing service in, in order to uh, uh, improve their quality. So uh, this one, the customer action is what uh, the user need to accomplish uh, in order to get the, get the, uh, get, uh, get the service. Here, uh, 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 this uh, uh, touch point in the staff action is how to invite direct contact between the user and the service provider uh, provider and the back of stage is the all the activities carried out by the uh, project team that are invisible to the user and support. These are uh, technical changes uh, that the technical team can make the system to provide better service. So if you think of a hamburger uh, company, you might think about how the order system or how about like when you go to McDonald's, you need to interact with this app so you can order a burger. How can you actually make that more uh, uh, user friendly so you can order your hamburger better? So this is one way uh, of uh, prototyping uh, your surface. So uh, this one is a business uh, model canvas. Uh, I'm sure for those of you who are familiar with uh, business strategy, this is, uh, looks familiar. So this is an, an, an example from Under Armour. So for example, you identify your partner. So Under Armour is a sports brand. So you identify pro athletes. You look at uh, uh, activities, how you develop products for uh, uh, better performance. What are the resources, your brand, uh, your customer insight? How do you value uh, uh, position yourself? How do you produce yourself as a unique uh, uh, value uh, for your customer? 
Uh, how do you uh, uh, interact with your customer? Is it through shows, through uh, marketing, uh, the channels you do? Uh, what are the segments? So for example, it include, uh, for, for example, for Under Armour, is it, it's both for professional athletes and also people with an active lifestyle. And they will look at the cost and revenue. Uh, so this is one way for, for, of prototyping as well. So the fourth stage uh, is testing. So this time, uh, now you have the prototype, you can test it and get feedback uh, uh, from, from, your, uh, from, from, your, uh, from, from your users, how your prototype looks like. So this is a, a very famous example. It's called the Wizard of Oz testing. So in here, actually, uh, the user think that he is actually interacting with a computer that gives have speech recognition, but actually, is actually there's a wizard in, in, in the back. Uh, it's actually a human uh, uh, operating, not an actual computer. And uh, the, the point here is um, it allow uh, uh, the user to interact with an uh, uh, interface without knowing that response are being generated by a human rather than a computer, by having someone behind the scene who is pulling the levers and spinning uh, the witch. Uh, it allow uh, user uh, allow you to test user reaction to a system before you even have to think about its development. So, so for example, this is an actual example in in the IBM uh, computer. It it was trying to see what the user is thinking when it interact with the computer. So, in, instead of developing a software and developing everything, IBM come over a person behind the computer to do the manual operation, and because of that. Um, uh, it can really uh, uh, get the testing done really quickly. Uh, this is an exa another example. This is called a test card. So a test card uh, for you uh, to test your hypothesis. So for example, <coughs> here is an example uh, for uh, 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 whether whether the user will be able to repeat, uh, report a uh, breakage easily. So to verify that, uh, you you need to test whether your hypothesis is true or false. You need to make more ops uh, in order to script the report of your breakage. And then how will you measure what is successful? So you can measure it by how fast they can accomplish it. And what would success look like? Uh, success will be look like if they will be able to do thirty seconds. So this is a way uh, for you to measure uh, 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 how your testing work. So uh, the point of all this uh, 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 testing is to, for you to uh, uh, learn uh, uh, from the user uh, what did they like, uh, what was exciting for them, uh, what did what they didn't work. Uh, what kind of ideas they generated from interacting with your prototypes. And then the fourth is what question they, they come up. So to capture this uh, feedback from the, from the user, you can use this I like, I wish, what if statement. So I like is what expect of, uh, of he or she like about the prototype. Uh, which is how the prototype can be improved. Uh, it is usually maybe a more negative feedback. And then you have what if. So what if uh, uh, um, uh, there, there's a new suggestions that might not directly uh, link to the prototype. So it uh, might be uh, help you to redefine uh, your problem statement. So uh, again, uh, the point of view I want to go back is uh, you, uh, the point of view is really important uh, for you to consider uh, why uh, that person will have that point of view uh, and uh, uh, the third is design thinking should not be applied when challenge and the solutions are well known. So as I said, design thinking is not for every problem. So if the pro solution is very obvious, then don't go overboard with design thinking and come and do all the stages. So here's an example of the five whys for those of you who are not uh, familiar with this technique. So for example, okay, the problem is staff have their own unauthorized copy of cheat sheets instead of relying on menu. So why? Okay, they can't find the instruction on the menu because the menu are online and difficult to find, uh, because the quality manager removed printed copies of methods and the NATA show old versions of printed methods and assessment. And why? Because there isn't time to keep 20 printed uh, methods up to date. So the solution after you do the five whys is to improve access to an online document system. So the, this five whys uh, uh, is also called a wood cost analysis to find out what exactly the problem happened. And this is really helpful uh, for defining your, your point of view. 
So uh, these are some uh, benefits of design thinking uh, and maybe some reason uh, why you are joining the talk today. So uh, as I said, it's really good for a uh, uh, complex uh, multidimensional problem. Uh, it's a collaborative process. You really uh, need to work with uh, different team members, different users uh, to uh, do a five stage of um, design thinking. Uh, you need empathy, uh, you need uh, understand the human context, the behavior, the motivation. Uh, you need the inquiry uh, to identify the constraints that are relevant to the problem. Uh, you need testing through uh, observation uh, using a probe sense uh, approach. Uh, and as I said in the earlier in the history, uh, design thing is very official. So you need to visually modelizing uh, your 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 uh, your products uh, and solution focus. As we said, uh, we are, it's not a problem focus uh, 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 method. It's a solution focused method. Uh, rapid uh, prototyping uh, fail fast and early, and finally, it's integrated thinking. So uh, okay, this is uh, the last part of the talk, and I think uh, why uh, most of you might be interested. Uh, why do we want to apply design thinking uh, for SDGs? So. Uh, a lot of the SDGs, as we say, as, as we see, like climate action or gender equality, they are really difficult problems. They are not linear problems that you can solve very easily. So, using a human center, uh, center approach uh, is really a, a good way for us to understand uh, how we might able to solve this problem. Uh, it's also a favorite approach by the UNDP uh, because it's based on empathy. Uh, it's possible to materialize the idea uh, which leads to a desirable, feasible, and viable solution. Uh, it uses uh, methods that combines analysis and in intuition. As I said earlier, uh, there's addictive uh, 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 thinking involved, and it involves those who are most affected by a given problem. So, uh, so uh, this is, uh, yeah. A lot of the sustainable problem can be uh, solved by applying design thinking. So we are we are striving for simple but not simplistic solutions uh, that help to guide us. Uh, and and design thinking is one way for us to do it. Uh, it also uses a positive of, uh, idea of, of men. Everyone can make a difference by contributing his or uh, her knowledge in a team setting. So uh, you don't need to be an expert to solve a problem. Uh, you can just, uh, even you don't know how to uh, maybe have a technical uh, expertise to develop a prototype, you can simply interact as a user and give feedback. And that's it. that is already helpful. So everybody can contribute in design thinking, no matter what's the level. Uh, by starting with a design income, uh, you can also uh, 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 break through solutions uh, uh, that can be uh, uh, found uh, when traditional incremental problem solving fails. Uh, if you're interested to learn more about uh, this, uh, I highly recommend that you join our next talk on system thinking, which also talk about how can we solve really complicated problem using a holistic approach. So, uh, for each of the SDG, I don't know which of the SDG you are most passionate about. Uh, so whether it's gender, uh, poverty, hunger, uh, think about where the issues begin, why does it matter, uh, who and why are uh, affected, uh, what needs to be done to solve that problem and connections to other SDGs. So this is very much similar to the star bursting technique uh, that I mentioned. Why, what, how those uh, problems happen. Uh, this is a complicated diagram, uh, but basically uh, it means uh, uh, with the five stage of uh, 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 um, design thinking, we are using different uh, techniques of thinking. We are thinking with the soul, thinking with the body, thinking with the mind, the logic, thinking with the heart. So don't worry about the detail of this diagram, but the idea is uh, this five stage design thinking approach is using all uh, parts of your of, of your body. So for example, prototype, you're using thinking with your hand, you're using a hands-on interacting with the product to get ideas. Uh, and I don't know how many of you have seen this. This is called a donut model. Uh, it's by Kate Waitworth, uh, uh, Oxford e economics uh, 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 professor. Uh, it's a way of looking at uh, as, as sustainability, looking at uh, ecological ceiling and uh, social issues. Uh, I won't go into detail on this. Uh, I have another talk on donut economics uh, again, also in March, if you want to sign up. But basically, is uh, 
how can you use design thinking so uh, you can create a safe and just space for society uh, while staying within the planetary boundaries of ecosystem. Uh, here's an example. If, if you, uh, this is a very good paper on how to use design thinking on the sustainable development of traditional handcraft. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you, can, you can find this uh, article is available on, uh, on the web. So uh, uh, here is a, uh, a study on how they make traditional handcraft and they use a different like prototype, uh, they interact with the user and using uh, the five stage that we talk about empathy, define idea, prototype and design, they were able to, uh, 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 for example, in the empathy stage, they did research, uh, they did literature review and then they define a problem by creating questionnaire using analysis, and then they experiment using uh, uh, ideation prototype uh, with different models, and they, they finally come up with strategy and conclusion. Uh, so this is a, a very good uh, example uh, uh, application of design thinking uh, on, a, on, on a product. So if you're interested, I highly recommend this, uh, this paper. So, uh, Here's an, another example as well. So for example, if you're working with a child uh, who likes stationery and you want to talk about gender equality with this child. So one way using design thinking is maybe you can create a stationery collection with famous quotes about gender equality and to inspire the child. So um, there's different way you can use design thinking to solve SDG problem. So uh, having said that, uh, there are some uh, challenges in uh, solving the uh, 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 design thinking. Uh, so for example, short-term thinking. Uh, uh, most time uh, design thinking is applied only when develop a product, uh, a particular product. However, a design thinking uh, can be built in a long-term strategy of the so uh, solution. Uh, if organization want to uh, uh, really use design thinking, they should use that to envision the entire ecosystem and apply the principles of princ design thinking to every step of the process. Uh, there's also a scaling and a, a pacing issue. So for example, uh, digitization has exploded the number of touch points through which businesses interacting with consumers. Today, enterprise have to interact with their consumers at numerous channels uh, in a world when the time to respond has come to near zero. Uh, it can be challenging a task to apply design thinking to every touch point and innovate and engage in a fight uh, uh, fast weight. So businesses uh, should prioritize the channel and to uh, apply design thinking approach uh, uh, in a phase-wise manner. Uh, and the third is to build a design culture. Uh, in most organizations, design thinking is limited to the uh, design team. Uh, however, design thinking should be uh, across every every function. So there's, here's a, a very good example. I, I'm sure a lot of you have used Airbnb. So Airbnb has used a unique approach where every project team at the Airbnb has a project manager whose explicit role is to represent the user and not a particular functional group like engineering or design. So this is, uh, 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 here's a quote from uh, Alex uh, Schiffer. Wow, hi, Ruby. I think you need to mute yourself. Yeah, Sorry. Sorry, I need to mute Ruby. So, okay. Um, uh, so, uh, according to uh, 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 Alex Slifer from uh, Product Hut and Airbnb, config is, is a huge and important part of innovation. Uh, hence, the structure creates points where different points of view meet and either align or not. So uh, Airbnb has really uh, inbuilt this uh, 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 design culture into uh, the, uh, their operation. And finally, uh, designers and products may have a professional uh, 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 block. A uh, design thinking approach, as I said, is iterative, uh, uh, agile. However, uh, 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 a lot of product stakeholders, uh, 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 they get stuck uh, wanting to launch a, a perfect uh, uh, product. Uh, that's why uh, um, uh, when using a design thinking approach, uh, an enterprise should be prepared to launch a minimum viable product, something that will work. It might not work the best, but it might work. Then you can iterate it with consumer feedback and then scale it further in a step-by-step -step manner. So, uh, 
I know I've gone through very quickly and I think uh, we have 10 minutes for question, uh, but here are some resources. As I said, uh, IDOU is one uh, and Stanford D School, uh, they are one of the uh, uh, found, uh, foundings uh, um, uh, school uh, on, on, on this uh, topic. So uh, I highly recommend you do it. Uh, interaction design is also very good uh, if you want to learn more information. So uh, I have gone through very quickly uh, and uh, I, I know there must be a lot of question uh, uh, of how you want to use design thinking. So, uh, any anybody want to want to want to ask? Any any of the stage you want me to explain a bit further? I know it's, it's very quick, but I want to give you enough of an overview so you understand uh, the design thinking process. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, and <coughs> hi. Hi. So you mentioned there are two things that I have encountered personally before that you mentioned this is the pain point of us designers that we would encounter. Number one, you just say in the past, especially in Hong Kong, a lot of stakeholders are stuck in their old ways and would want to push it and have a perfect product in the end without doing the, doing the divergence and convergence. How would you approach solve that problem? Sorry, uh, so the question is how to solve the problem when when there's no time. Stakeholders are willing to change their ways and uh, just wants to have one design cycle and come up with a perfect product. Oh. Uh... I, I really think, as I said, it's a design culture thing. So not everybody buy the design thinking. Uh, some people are very obsessed with finding the right solution without really understand uh, what exactly is the problem. As I said, the, the definition stage is, is the most difficult. So sometimes we don't even know what the problem is because the user don't even know. You need to have that step uh, of trying what exactly uh, 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 the product might look like, then you can go back. But I, I, I agree. I, I don't know if anybody here, maybe Petra, want to share any experience you have with that, that uh, people are, are unwilling to use that divergent and convergent thinking in, in terms of their design thinking process. Oh, yes. Uh, not really. I mean, yes, I totally uh, agree to that one as well, that it's a bit of, a, even though it's not a new approach, clearly it's, it's not commonly used at all. So I, because I did a couple of courses just recently on design thinking, and then I was trying in one of the clients I have, I was trying also to hold a meeting that is a design th thinking led meeting just because we were even unclear. So the problem statement was not even the, the problem. It was really defining who is actually our user because we were working with so many different stakeholders that we were very unclear who do we want to put into the center of the business. And in the end, it was, even though initially it was so overwhelming for everybody, in the end, it was really the, the best approach to do and to find out who do we really want to serve. So, so I think the people <laughs> will have to be convinced by doing it once and then they see also the benefit out of it. So thank you, Petra. So, so you're saying that sometimes it's not even the problem. It's like, we don't even know who the user is. <laughs> then we don't, we don't know how to, who to interview. So, so I think, yeah, that's, that may be another, another wicked problem. It's like, how do you define who, who are the stakeholders? Yeah. It's really very, so for us, it was a very good way to understand, like, I mean, really for, uh, for an, or like initially we were thinking of maybe it's clear anybody to everybody in the team also, but no, it really clarified so many things because it's a startup. So everything is a bit unclear still in the beginning and blurry. So it really defined the current situation then also how we want to move forward. Hmm. Thank you. That, that's a very good insight. Any Anybody have experience with design thinking or how it work or it might not work in, in your work or personal setting? I don't know, maybe Duncan, any, any or Maria, anybody with a, with a first experience on design thinking? Or I, I, I don't know, other courses or materials you have read, what, what, what struck you the most? Hi. 
Hello. Hi. This is James. So I think a lot of times in Hong Kong, a lot of people are um, in a rush and don't want to have long meetings. Mm -hmm. So using design thinking is actually time consuming. And it takes a lot of effort, whether it's the brain power or uh, like you need to do a lot of research. And I think like in Hong Kong, when I have some project with my group mates, they don't really like using design thinking. They'd rather use something that is fast and it's that is fast and easier for them to um, implement instead of using design thinking to think about the whole process. I think this is one of the main problems that I face. Uh, yeah, so I like my response is it depends on what, what is exactly is the problem, right? So like for, for the wicked problem, for the difficult problem, maybe you really need design thinking because if you don't use that approach, you wouldn't be able to think of it holistically. Whereas for some more simple linear problem, it is possible to use traditional problem solving. But I, uh, as I said, the challenges to design thinking is some people are thinking in sh very short term and like the world has moved so fast right now, right? We expect instant feedback and some people think all oh, this iteration process and they want to expect the perfect product at, 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 uh, 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 very quickly. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a dangerous thinking instead. But I, I, I don't know what other people in, in this group th feel, but I, I do think there's a lot of design thinking, for example, in the sustainability community, but I, I don't see enough application of it. Uh, that's that's my general feel. I, I think people talk about it, people like it as idea, but people people don't use, actually use it in, in a day to day setting. I would like to add on top of what my experience with Joyce. You mentioned that people don't like meeting, and yeah, I know that's so true because half the time I'm in the meeting and I don't even get to speak. As you can see, I'm a very talkative person, and half the time it's a meeting. They call me and I'm listening to things that I'm not interested in. I have no stake in it. So one problem with meeting is that a lot of times people who are not related to a meeting are invited just for the sake of inviting. So it, it ends up wasting a lot of people's time. I agree and it sucks. Thank you, Hanika. Uh, any, anybody else want to share? I don't know, maybe Maria, Duncan, Samantha. Have you come across this idea or is that, uh, I, I hope everybody learn, well, not learn, but here's something new today. I, I, I try to make it very informative and I know I do tend to speak very quickly, but I, uh, I, I hope there was quite some info there that you can take away or some techniques you can use. Hi, Benita. Hi. Um, thank you so much for sharing. The session was really informative and insightful. Um, I actually have a question more than uh, something I want to share. Uh, I am curious. Um, so I came from a corporate background. Um, whether we apply design thinking or not, it depends on, you know, the, the group that you happen to be in, the mentality and the ability of the people that you work with. Now you you now in a um, you know in the sustain in the world of sustainability, how have you seen the same concept apply to um, to the corporate setting versus what you're trying to achieve in terms of contributing to SDG? Uh, this is my personal experience. I don't know if, for example, Petra and other have other views. I. I think in terms like, I know uh, Petra is also in the circular economy community. I, I think it's easier in the sustainability uh, uh, community to embrace the design thinking process because they they like the human center approach. They like the iterative process. For the MNC, the problem is, I, I think it's a lot of top down. Uh, a lot of the, the management saying, I want to do that. And they might not like to change stuff when they, uh, go through policy. So a lot of the sustainability is very, uh, like uh, at least with my experience with the social enterprise or the NGO or the product they think, uh, if they didn't work, they don't do, but MNC is like a, a big, big, big elephant in the room, right? So uh, for example, I work with some uh, property company, they have like a, 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 the global uh, SDG uh, uh, policy, and when they come to Hong Kong, they define certain objective and they really stick the KPI with it. If you ask them to, oh, let's adapt, change it a little bit, it's, it's more difficult. 
but that's my view. I, 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 and might not be true when with other people experience. I don't know uh, if anybody, I don't know, maybe Duncan have, have uh, other experience or, or, or Petra, when you work with the corporates, what, what's your view? Duncan, you got something to share? <laughs> Not so really. Yeah, hello. Yeah. No. I. I, I just. Uh, I. I've been practicing some design thinking, but not with the corporates, but with some different kind of stakeholders, like the public, the community, or. Yeah, I am trying to doing that, but it is is is. I'm not sure. I. I cannot compare it with the corporate because I really didn't try it, but I would say, the same similar problems are actually we are saving. Uh, we were facing the community and different kind of residents or what, what, whatever stakeholders there just like, do you don't want to engage, uh, do, do you want to try a lot of uh, this time consuming process? They are just trying to get some quick wins, quick solutions sometimes, but it takes time for us to mold, to build a community or build them, to make them familiar, right? to familiar with the whole process. Maybe this, I guess this is more easier in the social context I'm not sure whether this really works in the corporate as well. But to me, I think why what my my experience tells me like not really rich, but it tells me like the key is to let the others really understand the spirit of the, of design thinking rather than just go through the whole process. Somehow they they don't even know that they are uh, undergoing that kind of process. They just don't know that they are participating in step by step. Sometimes like this. Sometimes like this. Yeah, I think the spirit, like the user centric and be more creative or be more bold, more, more iterative, the spirit is more important than the five steps or the three steps or to me, just like this. But I think it's a very good informative uh, uh, seminar uh, talk to conclude all the information in a very quick, uh, uh, really, really informative, informative. Thank you, Anita. It's really inspiring as well. Try to connect with the social problems and the SDGs here. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, Aaron. Hi, yes, Hello. I can hear you, yeah. Thank you again for the very good presentation. I have a um, question working with um, SDG goals. Sometimes you also work with nonprofit companies and the design thinking process often involves like the three, uh, let's say, factors that have to come together for innovation, feasibility, uh, desirability and viability. And the viability also includes sometimes the, the business, the financial aspect, how um, how do you argue with uh, with nonprofit organizations um, that the, this factor can sometimes not be achieved in in this innovation that you may maybe go equal or even you try to use as less resources as possible? Sometimes you have like no profit outcome. Um, it, it's not a real question, but more a discussion. How it, do you say to them, okay, this is are the three points of design thinking, but this one is not so important for you as a nonprofit organization? Mm -hmm. uh, Duncan, you have a response to that? You said you've worked with a lot for that. Yeah, I no, I just come some, uh, but I still think it's, it's still it's still it's still uh, it's, it's still. I mean, it is still applicable to different kind of solutions or what kind of solutions just like because everyone it's it, it just like in terms of what kind of yeah parameter you're trying to draw i'm not sure because i'm i'm still a little bit confused or struggle about your questions or maybe you can yeah we can discuss or yeah, yeah or what yeah mm -hmm. No, it was more that uh, like this, you in the design thinking process, you look at the three factors that have to mm -hmm. come together. And uh, I think with nonprofit or SDG goals, sometimes one of the three factors does not come together. And then you first start with an introduction to design thinking. These are the three more important factors that have to, have to come together. And during the process, you find out that we look more on feasibility and desirability. And let's say the financial aspect is not so important from what I have seen because nonprofit organizations don't rely or let's have don't have the focus so much on the third um, bubble. 
Okay, no, I, I guess to me it's still important in figure out the solution, but, but but it's not easy. Maybe sometimes, or maybe it's a little bit. Sometimes we are neglected. Some I'm not that sure whether I'm. Yeah, sometimes it's neglected, but it's still important, right? Because we want to make it sustainable, to make it more, uh, I mean, financially sustainable as well. Sometimes I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure whether I'm. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, yeah, if it's possible, the, it's yeah, also yeah. desirable that the non-profit project or SDG goals finances itself. But uh, I, at least with non-profit, sometimes there is not so much money available and money is not, let's say, the focus of the innovation. Yeah, everyone, I, I think uh, I don't have a good uh, uh, answer to, to mm -hmm. what you said, but I, I think there are different ways of looking at the problems. Uh, like uh, I know... Uh, for example, there's a, a different way of measuring impact or what, what actually success means in the social mm -hmm. sector. Uh, and yeah, I, I, of course, NGO and business, they, their KPIs is, is, is quite quite a bit different and how you measure if something is really successful is different as well. But um, I think maybe, maybe in the next talk, I can also uh, give some example of how design thinking has been uh, applied in the social innovation scene in Hong Kong. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, if, if Jasmine is still here. I, uh, I, I, I think uh, Jasmine is from Jim Impact and I think Jim Impact will have some good stories on that, uh, on, on that company. Hi, Jasmine, can you say a few words about Jim Impact? Hi, I know you're here, Jasmine. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm Jasmine. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So um. So I'm from German Pass. So what we um. So what we do is uh we are um ecosystem builder, for um we have a community of um, of more than seventy social startups, and so like um we are trying to decide some programs for our community partners and also uh, what we are um, also developing on it's uh we are. Uh, developing on um, corporate uh, partnership and also impact investments so this is um, these are our uh, the focus of the year um, and we are also um, yeah <laughs> that's what we basically do thank you Jasmine and I, I think it was a uh, Dishka who uh, said in the chat group you are in the process of learning about SDGs uh, uh, do you have any specific questions for the group uh, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of talents and expert in, in here. Maybe we can we can answer some of the question. Hi, are you here, Studiska? <laughs> so um yeah uh um can you post the link for next section on design thinking in social innovation? Uh, I don't have that schedule yet. Uh, I um. My next few talks will be on uh, system thinking and donut economics. Uh, we are also doing some talks on spiders and animals. Uh, uh, I try to do these talks every two weeks. Uh, and again, uh, these talks are, are free. So I, it, uh, it takes me some time to develop them. And uh, yeah, but uh, please, please follow our, our webpage. Uh, we do have interesting topics and, and please feel free to, to suggest topics and uh, maybe I can work something out with, uh, with with Jasmine or Duncan on that. So I, I know we are a little bit over time now. Any anybody have any remarks or questions before we close the night? So uh, uh, again, thank 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 you everybody for for coming and participating. I, I I know it's a lot of information and there is a lot of information out there on the topic and and I do encourage you to read more and and find more case study on how this be applied. Uh, I, I I hope uh, it gave you a gift uh, overview on the topic and some uh, history and 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 the methodology, so you have the uh, uh, tool to 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 learn more on your own. So. Uh, Anybody? I know it's late. Maybe you need to grab a grab a wine and go drink. Uh, go go sleep. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I think that concludes our night. So thank you everybody for joining again. And as I said, uh, please follow our webpage. And if you like our talks, uh, please recommend to your friend or your organization, your school or company, and we'll be happy to schedule something. 
So mm -hmm. thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you, Benita. Bye bye. Thank you, Benita. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye.